So welcome to what drives you. If I can drive us out of the Marriott. <laughs> this is a good start. Yes. <laughs> I'm Karen Cho and this is my new ride for the week. I'm taking it for a spin along the Quasette for the Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity and bringing along some of the biggest names in advertising, business and entertainment. Woo! As we ask, what drives you? Today I'm taking a trip down memory lane with Edelman President and CEO Richard Edelman. Edelman has been running the global communications and marketing firm for more than 20 years. During that time, the company was named PR Agency of the Decade by Advertising Age and The Homes Report. But first we have to head back to 1952, before Richard Edelman was even born. That's when his father Daniel Edelman founded the firm. Richard was born just a few years later and grew up surrounded by entrepreneurs and business leaders. Throughout my youth, um, he would bring over various characters such as Orville Redenback or the Popcorn King. Right. And, uh, I learned how to cook popcorn that way, never burn. And I got to meet Harlan Sanders, uh, Colonel Sanders, and uh, so I always was hanging around with entrepreneurs and my dad wasn't shy about bringing clients home. Edelman's education took him away from the excitement of the big city in his teens but returning to join his father's business was never the original plan. Um, I went away to uh, prep school when I was uh, 15 to uh, the wilds of New Hampshire. No girls and no, right. no distractions. No distractions and <laughs> no civilization. A lot of trees. Right. <laughs> I went to college at Harvard and um, Harvard B School, and I was all set to go work in uh, product marketing in uh, Playtex. And uh, my dad had an offer to be acquired by DDB Advertising, and he didn't really want to sell the company. And so uh, he said, you know, please come you know, work here for a year. And if you don't like it, you know, you're an MBA, you can go somewhere else. And here I am 40 years later, can you believe? Right. <laughs> Together, the pair managed to keep the business in the family, turning down offers from big advertising holding companies along the way. So together we really built the agency. The best thing we did is not sell out to one of the big advertising holding companies because you know, we were able to diversify and also hang on during recessions and not make any money and invest in the next leg of growth. That's quite extraordinary because even in good times now we've seen acquisition after acquisition by yeah. the agencies. So how have you managed to stay independent? Just say no. Right. <laughs> and, the money um, wasn't tempting at some point because I'm sure you've been offered a big paycheck. No, because you know, neither of us care that much about money and actually what matters most to us is the work and we're sort of used to being our own bosses and uh, changing our minds and, you know, doing, <laughs> doing what you do when you're an entrepreneur, figuring it out. 20 years after joining, Edelman was made president and CEO of the company and has continued to build his father's global vision. Our business strategy was to build an infrastructure that made us global. So we're now in 65 cities and we actually believe now that we're plenty global. Now what we're trying to do is become more, um, I guess, full service. So we call ourselves a communications marketing firm, not just a PR firm. You know, when I started it was $6 million and we're getting near a billion dollars. And that's quite a progress for a family business. The PR and media world of tomorrow has left many in the industry with questions over how to harness technology and data. And Edelman is no exception. Does technology present a different ballgame, potentially? Well, there are multiple things happening to our business. First is the um, disruption of the media. Our traditional channel has been uh, you know, talking to reporters and there are half as many reporters at local newspapers, etc. I want to talk about the evolution in terms of targeting stories to journalists, yep. but now these days you have a different platform, you have social media. Well, I, I look at the media ecosystem really in four parts. There's mainstream, there's shared, there's owned, and then there's paid. And there's some overlap, like a Venn diagram, but um, the Mainstream media is not, as you say, necessarily the first place or the first port of call uh, because some so stories need to get momentum and they need, in a sense, to be owned by the community. 
Edelman's time at the company has been focused on marketing and reputation management. He thinks it's time for brands to take a stand on the issues. I want brands to take on the issues of the day. I believe that uh, somehow brand marketing is the new democracy. It sounds like you're seeking utopia. Though. I mean, these are brands that are there for commercial purposes. But I think that brands should be there for commercial purposes and take advantage of this ethos of the moment. We do want workers to work the right amount of time and we do want sustainability and we do also want to have a place for discussion. It's a partnership. It's not just us selling stuff to you, that it's a more equal kind of relationship.